God, hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me uh, to, to Ephesians chapter 5. That's Ephesians chapter 5. The more and more I read this Passion Bible, I'm, the more and more I'm loving it. Just a uh, Passion Translation. This brings out just the love of God. Reading from uh, Ephesians chapter 5, starting with verse 1 in the Passion Translation, it says, Follow God and imitate all that He does in everything that you do. For then you will, be, you will represent your Father as His beloved sons and daughters. And continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. For he has surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God. Like a, the aroma of adoration. A sweet healing fragrance in heaven and in earth. Heavenly Father, we thank you. For your, your, your great love, we thank you for your word that brings forth life. Breathe upon it, Lord. Breathe upon us, Lord, that we might, Lord God, be changed and transformed by the hearing of the word. And may we be doers of the word, not just hearers only, Lord God. May we walk it out. Every single day of this week, may we experience your great love like, and be underneath the waterfalls. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And that's what it is, is experience his love, to be underneath the waterfalls of his, his grace and his love that's being poured out upon you. And not only he pours it upon you, that's where the rivers of living water, as Jesus said, from your innermost being will come rivers, come rivers from you. Because of the waterfalls of his love that's flowing in you, filling you up to overflowing, the rivers of that are raging, uh, uh, like a raging torrent will come out of you. And it transforms everything it comes in contact with. It changes, transforms everything that it comes in contact with. How many has ever seen a flood before when it comes raging down this, or a dam breaks or something? It, it, the torrent just changes the, the outlook of towns, cities, and everything. It's just houses are swept away. It's just transformed. Nothing is the same. And that's the same way with... God's love comes through you like a torrent raging river and it transforms more uh, people uh, into his likeness and his image. That's where the kingdom of God comes through you to transform change for good. Hallelujah. Follow God as intimate, uh, imitate all he does in everything you do, in everything you do. For then you will represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters. That's what Jesus did. He only did what, what he saw the father do, told him to do. Hey, he listened to the father. He had an open heaven. He walked in that open heaven because he saw and talked to the father. And he was obedient to do everything that the Father told him to do. And he was empowered to do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, Romans chapter 8 says. So that same Holy Spirit that Jesus was empowered to walk in an open heaven empowers you and I to do the same on this earth. In this life, where we, where every single day of our lives, so that the river of God uh, would flow like a torrent raging river through us of His love. So Jesus walked in that open heaven. We could walk in that open heaven. It says, and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ, for He surrendered His life as a sacrifice for us. Uh, his great love for us was pleasing to God 
like an aroma of adoration. It was a perfume. It was a fragrance that was sweet smelling. It didn't smell like a skunk, in other words. It didn't smell like a garbage heap. It smelled like somebody wanted a, a fragrance that people wanted to be around. There's some people that, that might not have taken a bath for five weeks, man. You don't want to be around them, do you? They don't smell too good. <laughs> but there's other people that have uh, been bathed. They, they, they wear cologne, and, and that cologne is like, oh, wow, that's just awesome. Where do you, what kind of cologne is that? Awesome, awesome, awesome. And, and it smells good. It's a sweet-smelling fragrance. Perfume is sweet-smelling. It doesn't stink. Poop stinks. Garbage stinks. Skunk stink. But that's like Christ. It says, you to be a sweet-smelling fragrance. 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 Fragrant aroma of adoration. See, uh, our lives go up before him as worship of sweet-smelling adoration, or it could be a stench in the nostrils of God. Uh-oh. We want to, to allow the love of Christ just so saturate our lives and transform our lives that so we're walking in that love that it goes up before God as a, a sweet-smelling aroma, like incense before God. Hallelujah. A sweet healing fragrance in heaven and earth. That's what God, the Jesus, walked Jesus walked in, uh, <laughs> in his, his, that, that, that his life of worship and that adoration and dedication to the Father, hallelujah, was a sweet healing fragrance in heaven and earth. Both places, everywhere he went. <laughs> so, you know, heaven, there's no sickness, no disease, Right? But where Jesus walked, there was no sickness, no disease as well. Because he walked in that place of the, the, of the kingdom, was open to him. And all of heaven, where he walked, heaven went. Where he walked, heaven went. And beloved, that's what Jesus wants us to experience here on earth. Wherever we walk, heaven goes. That open heaven, that people touch, and people uh, people not only uh, come close to you, they come close to the Father. They come close to the Son. The, even if they're not even searching, they come close to Jesus because they're in proximity to you. And you're close proximity to him in heaven because all of heaven is open up. I know this is deep. <laughs> but we got to see ourselves as more than just than just this finite uh, beings here as uh, citizens of the United States of America. We have rights as the citizens of the kingdom of heaven because of Jesus Christ. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. And you know what? That's transferred through that open heaven we walk in. That spiritual dimension that we are. It ain't that, okay, I'm going to go to heaven and I'm going to live forever. You're living forever now as a spirit being. And when, when this, this body, this body right here dies, guess what? That's not the end of me. The real me is inside here. And we don't start living heaven, heaven in the full, fullness of joy. We don't start living, oh, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away some glad morning when this life is over. 
I'll fly away. And, and when people sing that, they, they sing it like, oh, God, when well, I'm going to have hell for the rest of my life. And when I go to heaven, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. No, that's, that's the wrong mentality that, we, that, Christ, uh, uh, that Christ wanted for us and won for us on the cross. At the moment you say yes to Jesus, guess what? You live in an eternity. You're living for an eternity. And, and believe it or not, guess what? If you have not received Jesus you, you, in this earth as human beings, we have that spark inside of us, the, 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 the potential to live for God. Or we have the potential to say no to God because God has given us that choice. And we're either living for eternity or we're going to die for eternity. The choice is up to us. Whether or not we're going to walk in that, uh, 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 that God-given uh, God given a uh, gift of, 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 uh, of eternal life with him. This love has nothing to do with sexual immorality. Verse three, lust or greed. For you are his holy ones and let no one be able to arouse you of them in any form. Lust, greed. You know what? People say sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is it's just face fact there. But the thing, the biggest thing is greed and lust are even greater. Lust is not just sexual thing. Lusting after something uh, the, 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 of of uh, uh, that, uh, for example, you can lust money. You can lust. You can lust after a relationship, a uh, husband or wife. You can uh, a boyfriend or girlfriend. You can lust after money. You can uh, lust after uh, looks. You can lust after. Uh, you can lust after anything, material possessions. You can lust after all that. It's not just, it's just a state of mind saying, I, I want to have that greater than I got to have you, Christ. Now we know what sexual immorality is. It's fornication. Sexual immorality here, you know what the word definition of fornication is? Uh, in, the, in the Hebrew? See, many people say, oh, this, this is Greek and everything else. But when you go back to the original Greek, which is taken back from the, from the Hebraic uh, form, which means uh, homosexuality, sexual, uh, sexual uh, deviance with animals, and means, uh, I said homosexual, and uh, uh, sexual uh, activity outside the bonds of marriage, which is implied for it. And marriage defined by the Bible, which says that one man and one, one woman united together forever. This love has nothing to do with sexual, it's not immoral, it's not, it's not impure. It's not full of lust. It's not greedy. It's not saying, oh, what's in it for me? I got to have something for me. Uh, you're getting something. I got to have something too. Isn't that what, what the whole society is today? What about me? Me, myself, and I, then Holy Trinity. It says the love is not about that. Why? Because it's unselfish. It's selfless. It's self-sacrificing. It's saying your needs come, uh, God, uh, before mine. Uh-oh. What's the biggest thing? Self-preservation, isn't it, today? But God's love saying, no, it's not about this. For you are his holy ones, and let no one be able to accuse you of any, these, of any form. People are going to read you. People are going to look at you. People are going to see you. Let no one be able to, to accuse you and see you and accuse you of any of these things. 
Guard your speech, forsake obscenities and worthless insults. These are uh, nonsensical words that bring disgrace and are unnecessary. Instead, let your worship fill let let worship fill your hearts and spill it, uh, out in your words as you remind each other of God's goodness. For verse five, for it has been made clear to you already uh, to you already that the kingdom of God cannot be accessed by anyone who is guilty of sexual sin or who is impure or greedy for greed is the essence of idolatry anyway and they're getting some how about me I'm jealous I look at the, how they work uh, and minister in the body of Christ. I'm jealous. They only been into the church for uh, for uh, six months, and uh, they're they're ministering on the altar ministry. And I've been in the church for twenty, thirty years. How dare them? That's a form of greed. That's jealousy. And it says right here, "Hey, it's not of God." It's a form of idolatry. Idols on the throne of your heart, which is meant for God himself. Get rid of the idols. How do we get rid of the idols? Cast them out. Get rid of them. God, forgive me. Repent. Allow God's uh, love to overflow you and sit underneath the waterfall of his love, beloved, sit underneath the waterfall of his great love and that love will flow in you and transform not only you but will come out like I said we said before like a torrent raging river that transforms everything around you for his good For greed is an incessant dollar. How could they expect to have an inheritance in Christ's kingdom while doing these things? This is habitual things that they're constantly doing over and over again. This is not confessed sin that has been uh, placed underneath the blood of Jesus Christ. It is... It is uh, th that people continue to do habitually things that are contrary to the word of God. Contrary to the kingdom. Verse 6. Don't be fooled by those who speak their empty words and deceptive teachings telling you otherwise. That's wives tell us foolish things. Foolish things. Foolish things. Don't be fooled by those who speak these empty words, deceptive teachings telling you otherwise. This is what brings God's anger upon the rebellious. Don't listen to them or live like them at all. Once your life was full of sin's darkness, but now you have the very light of the Lord shining through you because of your union with him. Your mission is now to live as children flooded with the revelation light. You're now to live as children of the light, walk in the light. Don't do things that are in the darkness. Before I gave my heart to God, you know what? I used to go out and party with the best of them. And most of the time when I went out, it was about 10 o'clock was when the clubs started happening. And believe you me, when I was out, I was out all night and there's some not some good things going on. Things in the darkness. Making covenants with, with, with shady people, hanging around with shady people. And it says, don't be fooled. There's people who speak, they, they sound like they're wise, but they're not.
Make sure you're full of the word of God. Make sure you know the word of God. And the word of God is just exuding from your life. That way you won't be fooled. Oh yeah, they'll have great intentions. Heard an old saying that the road, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Oh, I have a great idea, but there's, there's, uh, there's uh, some little bit illegal about it. Just this little part, if there's something a little bit illegal about it, then it's all wrong. So I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Because believe me, buddy, I'm not going to jail for you or nobody. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so know, know what is right and stand for right. Put away from yourself people that are going to lead you down the wrong path. And there's some people that, that, have, that, that, that might be good people. They might have great intentions, but, but you know, you got to have discernment. And that discernment comes from, guess what? There I say it again. Being, experiencing his love and being underneath that, that, that love that comes like a waterfall. Just, 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 I know what you're saying, Lord. I'm hearing what you're saying. I'm not listening to what the media has to say, the news. I'm not listening to what the garbage on the internet says because everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. doesn't make it right. Even though that they, they put a snippet on there. I think it's funny, all those people that, that, that put on their famous people, you know. Oh, this person had died, you know. It's like, oh my, this person died. I, I know, I just go over to another site and say, nope, right there they are. They're, they're having chow right now, live. It says they're, they're doing this live. They're eating breakfast, see. It's not true. Don't be fooled. Don't be a fool. This is what God brings God's anger upon the, the rebellious. Don't listen to them or l l live like them at all. Put them out of your life. Don't live like them. There's an old saying uh, that, uh, that people used to tell me, uh, and I, I use it all the time. And counseling, well, if there's somebody, uh, if uh, all your friends jumped off the bridge, would you jump off too? So yeah, I know how to swim, I know how to high dive. Well, what if the, everybody's jumping off the bridge and there's a bunch of uh, hungry uh, great white sharks down there? Would you still jump off? Probably not. If you, you would, you probably kind of, you're stupid. Once you were full of darkness, your life was full of but now you have the very light of the Lord shining through you because of your union with him. Your mission is now to live as children flooded with the revelation light. You're supposed to be a light bulb. <laughs> You're no longer to be men uh, to, to, to mix in with the darkness at night. You're to be that light. And beloved, when you're so full of the light, your light, guess what? People ain't going to want to hang around you with them more. And guess what? That's okay with me. And that should be okay with you. That people out there that do bad things and do, do all kinds of garbage that you so-called uh, quoted as your friends before. Guess what? If you live like Christ, guess what? They might not want to hang around with you anymore because you're going to be just, just, uh, just, just, just boring to them. You're going to be the place of... You're going to be in the place of that God light flowing through you like a city that cannot be hid. We're to manifest that light to the world. Once your life is full of the sin and darkness, 
But now you have the very light of the Lord shining through you because of your union with him. And this is how you have the, 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 that light shining through you because of your unity with him, your unit, union with him. The very proximity to him causes his light to shine off you. You know what, uh, you, ever, you ever noticed, uh, looked at the moon? You know the moon does not give off light of its own. It is reflecting the sun's light. And that's the same way with you and I. We are reflecting the sun's light from within us. <laughs> and the supernatural fruit of his light will be seen in you. Goodness, righteousness, and truth. In the revelation light, you will learn to choose what is beautiful to our Lord. And when you're walking in that revelation light, you begin to see him and you begin to choose what, what, what's pleasing to him. You won't no longer say, what would Jesus do, WWJD? But you'll do what Jesus did. And you walk in that beautiful revelation of the Lord. And don't even associate with the servants of darkness because they have no fruit in them. Instead, reveal the truth to them. Don't associate. Don't hang around with. That means don't partake with them in the same garbage that they're doing. Don't allow them to talk you into something. Instead, it says right here, reveal the truth to them. You tell them about the gospel. You tell them about the, the, about the truth. You say, no, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because it's against what God wants for our lives. That's against the word of God, and I will not go there. The very things they do in secret are too vile and filthy even to mention. Huh? Whatever the revelation light exposes, it will also correct. And everything that reveals truth is light to the soul. This is why the scriptures say, Arise, you sleeper. Rise up from the dead, and the anointed one will shine his light through into you. It's time to wake up. It's time for the church, you and I, to wake up as a church and allow the light to shine. There's a dark society out here. We see a whole bunch of it. There, uh, uh, these protests, even in the darkness. How come they're not protesting in the middle of the day? You see them at night marching down with signs. Uh, there could be protests during the day, but most of the ones that they show on TV, I seen is at night. Why? What kind of stuff is going on? We're supposed to be the light that shined into darkness in the society today. And that light to transform the light and life of the Lord Jesus Christ to transform ignorance. Ignorance. You know what ignorance is? Lacking knowledge. Choose what is beautiful, Lord. And don't be even associated. Whatever the revelation light exposes, it would also correct everything. Uh, rise, you sleepers, rise from the dead. It's saying it's time to get up, time to make a stand. Don't live foolish as those with no understanding. He says those who doesn't have no, doesn't have any uh, understanding, guess what? They're fools. You don't have no wisdom, guess what? You're full. You don't have no understanding, you're full. says, hey, don't live like a fool as those who have no understanding, no wisdom, but live honorably with true wisdom. True wisdom comes from God. 
And if you lack wisdom, wisdom is the right knowledge rightly applied. There's some people that know a lot of stuff out there. But dare I say, they, they, they appear to be dumber than a box of rocks. Because if you, you don't apply that knowledge rightly, that's wisdom. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but, but without wisdom, it's nothing applying that. Hey, guess what? I got a PhD. I'm sitting in the, I'm sitting in the house making a sandwich. I'm not working anywhere. I got a P, three PhDs. <laughs> That's foolishness. I'm just using an example. What I'm, I'm talking about here, what it's talking about here. Don't be foolish as those who have no understanding, but live honorably with true wisdom. True with true wisdom. Following the word of God. Listen to what he tells you to do. His plan for your life. You don't know what to do in this certain situations? Ask God. He'll tell you. In fact, the Bible says, James says, says this, that if you lack wisdom, uh, ask God who will give you abundantly, liberally, in other words, abundantly. So you don't do foolish things with what you know. <laughs> Gee, I know how to make... I'm a chemist. I know I went to school for chemistry. Guess what I'm going to do? Uh, I can make all kinds of alcohol and drugs. <laughs> That's foolishness. Of course, I'm just using it as an example. Wisdom. Turn to somebody and say wisdom. Take full advantage of every day as you spend for your life uh, for his purposes. In other words, don't waste your life. Don't waste time. There's a lot of time robbers out there. Beloved, it's okay to say no to somebody. Say, no, I can't, I can't do that right now. I got some things I got to take care of. Take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purposes. And you will have discernment to fully understand God's will you will have discernment to fully understand God's will you want to know what God's will is <laughs> take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purposes for he what he wants you to do let me see, I want to watch the, the Star Trek marathon or do I, do I want to read the word of God today? <laughs> do I want to play Plinko on, the, on, the, on my tablet or do I want to, should I get into prayer and, 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 and worship? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Neither be drunk with wine or alcohol, which is rebellion. Instead, be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. In the Greek, this word here says be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't give yourself to everything else, but give yourself. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Word of God here says, in the Greek it says, be being filled on a daily basis. Continue to be filled to overflowing measures of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. And your hearts will overflow with a joyful song. You want joy? Be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. <laughs> Keep speaking to each other with words of scripture, singing the psalms with praises and spontaneous songs given by the Spirit. Always give thanks to the Father, God, for every person he brings into your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And honor you honor Christ by yielding to one another. Be tenderly devoted to one another in love. He's saying be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit the overflowing measures and when you do this you'll be able to, to speak out and edify those who are in your sphere of influence 
And that's what Christ wants to do, to be a influence through you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, walking in that open heaven, walking in that waterfall, ha 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 the waterfall uh, uh, of his love and grace and mercy, and, and when we're just totally filled up, overflowing measure, he comes flowing through us like a raging torrent river that transforms every person and everyone that we come in contact with for his glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We, uh, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. Uh, Lord God, may this week we sit underneath that waterfall, spend time in your, in, with you in your presence. Hallelujah. And your, your, your love, Lord God, just, just, just exude inside of us abundantly like a waterfall, Lord God. It's flooding us, Lord God, to overflowing measures, Lord God. And from us will come rivers of living water like a raging torrent changing everything in its path for your glory. Lord Jesus, help us, Lord God, to be more like you to have more understanding, more discernment, not to be fools, not to be like uh, uh, raving lunatics <laughs> uh, of, of uh, people that don't have understanding, don't have wisdom, but Lord God, get into your word, get a close proximity to you and listen to what you have to say, for your wisdom comes from above. And listening to you, as Jesus did. He seen, he did what you said to do. And he walked in that open heaven. And fullness of wisdom came wherever he walked. In Jesus' name, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Shalom. Nothing broken, nothing lacking. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Be blessed.